For more on Zelensky's plea to Congress today, who better to talk to than Igor Novikov? He is a former advisor to the Ukrainian president. Mr. Novikov, thanks for being here. One of the reasons that President Biden has been reluctant to supply planes and to put up a no-fly zone over Ukraine is because of the possibility it could provoke a nuclear conflict. Do you think President Zelensky is properly accounting for that possibility when he continues to ask for the no-fly zone? Well, I, I think he is uh, kind of taking everything into account. But you have to realize that, you know, from our vantage point, this conflict goes way deeper than just Russia, Ukraine. So I think Ukraine is only the beginning. And only today, President Putin delivered certain remarks where he actually named his main enemy and he called it the collective West. So I, I think, you know, Ukraine's only the beginning here. And, you, you know, what President Zelensky is trying to do, obviously, apart from the obvious, i.e. saving his people, is to kind of to prevent this conflict from spreading elsewhere, to Eastern Europe, to Western Europe, or to the uh, collective West in general. Do you think then, if the enemy, according to Putin, is the collective West, that it makes sense to just bypass even this no-fly zone and go directly to the idea of NATO intervention um, to be able to prevent the spread of this type of aggression by Putin? Well, uh, look, um, it's not as simple as it sounds, right? I mean, it's not only a military conflict. I mean, we're seeing so many dimensions to this hybrid war that, you know, there are other ways of stopping it. Only today, on Nicole Wallace actually appealed to, you know, the Western influencers, i.e. musicians, actors, celebrities, to reach out to their Russian fan, fan base in order to kind of break through that Russian propaganda echo chamber. Uh, President Putin feels really comfortable in Russia, and, you know, he's currently zombie a second generation of Russians. We're seeing those like really horrible pictures of like five-year-old kids with their, you know, Z swastikas or whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, you know, the West needs to concentrate on the economic side of this hybrid war, on the uh, information side of this hybrid war, let the Ukrainians fight it out, but supply us with all the necessary equipment. I mean, we're, we're good enough and we're home. We can, we can, you know, we can hold Putin back. But, you know, apart from the obvious, apart from the anti-tank munitions, we also need drones, we need airplanes, and we need anti-aircraft and anti-cruise missile systems. Because, you know, it's really difficult for us to kind of to just stand by and watch see your kids being killed, like it happened today in Mariupol, like it happened in Chernigov. Like, from my own experience, like, literally, a couple of days ago, I just walked out and there was a cruise missile flying over my house. And they usually fly really low, so you can and quite slow, so you can see them. And you know, it's just that feeling of helplessness. Helplessness. That's what kind of gets to you. And you know, it's just a matter of time. If we don't stop them here in Ukraine, I mean, those missiles will be flying over NATO territory. I mean, there's no question about that. You talked about deployment of Western influencers to maybe try to gain and gather more support against President Putin. Do you think, though, that there is enough opportunities to be able to find holes in that iron wall, that iron fist, that iron curtain that we have in Russia right now to be able to get that information out there? Or are you thinking more along the lines of a more global reaction than one that's necessarily within Russia? Well, look, I mean, information theory and, you know, the information realm in general is, you know, my specialty. So, again, I know what I'm talking about here. And, uh, look, at the moment, we're not the uh, not past the point of no return in Russia. So, you know, although they have Western social media block like Instagram and Facebook, I mean, there's still wide usage of VPN services. And, you know, they all listen to Western music. They watch Western Hollywood movies and they know who like Benedict Cumberbatch is and huge respect to him mm. for, you know, for, for a show of support. But, you know, I, I, I'm not kind of encouraging Western influencers to go all out on propaganda. What I'm asking them to do is to deliver those messages of peace. I don't want people of Russia, uh, Russia to kind of to turn anti-Putin. I want them to develop critical thinking, get an alternative source of information, and decide for themselves. Because if they're beyond saving, I mean, there's no message that will break through that wall. But I, I kind of, I believe they're not. But how effective can that be, though, if any of the protesters right now in Russia, we're seeing footage of them being immediately arrested, locked up. Um, how effective can it be for them to have that critical thinking that you're talking about to decide for themselves whether or not they want to be in support of what's happening in Ukraine? 
Well, look, I mean, there are different ways of protesting. That's issue number one. Uh, issue number two, I mean, President Putin, by the looks of it, is quite scared of his own people. Otherwise, he wouldn't be oppressing them that much. So um, what's saving him at the moment is, you know, his propaganda machine. So he's he's uh, corrupted his education system. So there's no kind of uh, the, there's no pro no protection against propaganda coming out of the education system. And, you know, he's using his TV channels, other propaganda uh, tools to kind of to get through the people and to zombify them. Uh, but I think if we just kind of give the people the right information, kind of encourage critical thinking, they'll figure out a way to deal with Putin. And Putin would feel that and probably back down. I mean, not not fully back down, but at least, you know, at least there'll be an alternative. Because at the moment, if you look at Russia, there's no alternative. I mean, we keep talking about this, you know, regime being overthrown, but by who and replaced by who? That's a big question. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned that a few days ago you walked out of your home and you saw this missile flying over. You're actually still in Ukraine near Kyiv. Um, why? Why haven't you fled? Why haven't you tried to leave Ukraine um, and, and your family? Why are you guys um, staying there right now? Well, it was my wife's decision. So she, she kind of, I, I offered her alternatives and she said, like, look, uh, you know, if somebody wishes you death, there's only so far that you can run before you have to face them. So why not face mm -hmm. them at home? And we're Ukrainians like that. I mean, if there's a threat, you won't see our back, you'll see our face. But more importantly, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. I have spoken to this girl today who's from Donetsk. And she moved to Bucha, which is outside Kiev and just been destroyed by the Russians. And she basically, she, she just told me, like, look, eight years ago, I was Kate from Donetsk. You know, a year ago, I was Kate from Bucha. I mean, is there any place in the world that I can run to where Russians won't be saving me? So, like, that's the kind of the uh, logic that we used as well. I mean, we could have moved to, like, Poland. But, you know, if we don't stop Putin here, Poland is one of the He's, he's probably not next, but one one of the next countries anyway. So, like, even the U.S. is not safe from him. I mean, he declares you an enemy. So, he, most likely he won't use, like, conventional weapons, but you're looking at potential nuclear war in, like, in due course, or a hybrid warfare. I mean, he, he's been really good at penetrating, you know, your cybersecurity and your informational realm. I mean, lots of the conspiracy theories, problems that you're experiencing have Russia behind them. And I hope the American people realize that. You are an advisor to Zelensky. What is it about him that is so effective in terms of his ability to convey a message to show that the Ukrainian people are in need of help, um, but that he himself, like you and your family, are still standing strong on your homeland to make sure that this is not going to continue to happen? Well, look, I, I keep describing, um, describing him as a human being amongst politicians. And, you know, it's it's true. I mean, like, look, he's sincere, he's honest. And if you think about it, there are, you know, there are two opposites kind of fighting it out. I mean, there's President Zelensky, who's incredibly honest, sincere and true. And there's President, President Putin, who's created an alternate reality. So, like, literally, I'm trying to find at least a single bit of truth in what he's saying. And it's really it's getting more difficult by the day. So I, th I think that's what attracts people. Plus, you have to remember, he's got one of the best uh, information and storytelling teams in the world at the moment. And I'm speaking from experience. So that obviously helps because, you know, unfortunately, after we kind of invented the Internet and kind of got flooded with information, it's not mm -hmm. only... The right thing you, that you do that is important, but also how you tell the story. Absolutely. Igor Novikov, please stay safe. You and your family, thank you for the fight and thank you for your insight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.